In this episode, we are going to learn how to do a router for async functions. We will add the function by name to the router, and we will call them from the router the async way. We will also allow to mix and match with closure with async blocks. And as a bonus, we will show how we can use this router across tasks and threads. So first, we are going to be very simple. We are going to start with sync functions. So we are going to have our add function, which takes a and b as 32, and will return a result of string. The subtract will be the same signature. And for now, we are just going to print them directly like that. Press save, and our cargo watch is going to print the result. Now, what we really want is a router, where we are going to register the function by name. And then we will call them with a router, get the function, and then we'll even have a question mark, so that will return a result to make sure we can handle the case where the function has not been registered, and that will display the result. And for now, it's not going to be async. We are going to do the sync way first. So obviously, we haven't done that yet, so we are going to comment this out, and we are going to create our module router. In our router module, we are going to create a type alias, handler function, which will have our function i32 i32 returning result string. So all of the function will have the same signature. Then we are going to define our struct for the router. Very simple, we will just have the handlers, which will be a hash map of handler function, the function definition that we have above. Next, we are going to implement two functions in the router. The first will be an associative function to create the router. So that will be new, will return self, and that will just create the handlers an empty hash map. And Rust will know the type, so we are all good. Then we are going to have our add handlers method, which will take the mutable of self, and that is because we are going to follow the builder pattern, and we need to mute the handler. And then we'll take the name of the function, and the function pointer, which will have the types that we define above. Then the implementation is very simple. We are going to do a self handlers, and we are going to insert. We take the ownership of the string, obviously, and then the function. And then we are going to return self to make sure that this function is shinable to follow the builder pattern. Then we are going to create the get method. And for the get, we have the name as a string, and we will return a result of a reference of the handler function. So very simple, we are going to get our hash map from self, and we are going to return the get name. And we are going to make sure to do the OK or else, since get returned the option of the handler function, and we need to return the error, such as we can use question mark in the colors. Now we can go back to our main.rs, and now we're going to use this router, the commented code that now it should work, and we're going to add exclamation marks to make sure that we have new data. We show the old terminal, and we're going to press save, and now we have the new result. So now both of this function has been called from the router. Now we're going to show how we can add a closure as well. The multiply, the two arguments will be the i32, i32. The types are actually optional here. And then we're going to return a result of the string. And we're going to follow the same format. Now if we go down and we call this method the exact same way, press save, and now we get our three results. Not too bad. So now what we really want is to make it async. So if we go back to our router, the optimist way will be to say we want to do a future of result string, and then we'll have everything. Unfortunately, this is not the way it works. There's some very deep reason we're not going to go through that, but we're going to show how to do it. So we're going to use two construct, which is a box future, which is a pointer of future in a way, and then the future trait as well. So the first strategy here is we're going to define our type alias for the arguments, and that will be a tuple of i32, i32. That won't be able to be used everywhere, but it will give enough typing, such as we can change only at one place, and then we need to change it in other places, but at least this is a good marker for this signature. And then we're going to have a type as well, a type alias, for our handler result. And that will be obviously result string. Then we're going to define our struct, which is going to be our handler. And the handler will hold the function. So that is a little indirection. And now this is a trick. So the function will need to be a pointer, so it's a box. 
And then within the box is going to be a trait object. So we do that with DIN and we're going to give it our FN. And inside the FN, is, we'll take the handler args type alias, and then it will return, and that is where things get a little bit tricky, a box future. And that is another type alias inside the futures crate, and that will allow us to give our result. And first we need to type that static, and then we can give our handler result. And finally, we need to make sure that the function is send, such as we can send it across thread, sync, such as it can, can be shared, and then a function will be static as well. So now our handlers are going to have a couple of functions. First is going to be our new as well, and that will take a generic that we're going to define later. We're going to see why. That will be the return of the function. And it will take the raw function, which will have the signature i32, i32, and then it will return the p generic. And in this case, we still have to be a little bit redundant here with the type, but again, we're going to link the two, and such as when you change it above, you will have to change it below. So the compiler will do the work for us. So now we can define our P generic, and the P will be a future. And the way that future works is that you define your output type. So that will be the handler result type alias that we have above. And we're defining it such as it's send, such as it can be sent across thread, and as well as static. Now for the implementation, we're going to have our handler and we're going to define our function. And this is a trick. So it's going to be a box, new, so that to match the tab that we have above, so it's a pointer to a function. And the function will actually be a closure. And we're going to do the move because we need to move the row function inside the body of this closure. Then as arguments, we're just going to have the handler args that we have defined above which is a tuple, which is matching the argument of the function. So that will allow us to, again, have one place where we can change it, and then the compiler will tell us where we need to match, and so it's relatively convenient. And then as a body, we're going to create a box pin, and then we're going to call the function with the arguments. So if we look above, this is a matching type that we just did below. Now actually, the new doesn't need to be pub in our design. Obviously, that depends on the design, it doesn't really matter. And now we're going to define our public async call method, which will allow us to call the function with the handler arguments types that we define above. So that will be the tuple of AB. And that will return the handler result. And the way we call the function is we're going to have self dot the function, and that will be in parentheses. And now we can give the parameters. And again, that will call the closure that we defined just above. And the closure takes the tuple that we have defined in the type alias. And then we do a dot await because this function is an async function. And so everything will be wired up. Now we did the hardest. So we don't need the handler fn anymore because we have our handler and direction. And so now in the router, rather to have a hash map of handler fn, we're going to have a hash map of handler. And then our add handler will actually take our fn. And in this case, we cannot really take the type alias because we need to have the P as a generic again. So we're going to do our generic P here, and we will define it exactly like we did above with our future and our handler result, the same as a static. And then our handler's hash map, rather to pass the function directly, we're going to do a handler and call our new associative function, and then we give our function. And finally, on the get, rather to return a result of handler fn, we are going to return the result of the handler struct. We press save. Obviously, we are going to have compile zero in main. So the first thing that we are going to do is make it async. So we are going to do a Tokyo main, make the main async, and we are going to go down and make those two async as well. And then if we press save, we can see that we have fixed these two handlers. The closure still fail, and this is because the closure is not async. In Rust, we do not have async closure yet in the stable. So what you do is you do a closure that have an async block. And because it's an async block, now we need to move the AB into the block. So we're going to do a move after the async. We're going to press save. And now this compiler is fixed.
So now we need to fix our router issue. And that is because before the get was returning the function directly, the result of the function. But now it's returning the result of the handler. So what we need to do is call the call method of our handler and then have the argument as tuple. Because that is a way that we have designed it. There's many ways to do it, but I found that that works pretty well. And then you have a dot await. We're going to add our exclamation marks. We're going to show the terminal. Press save. And voila. Pretty good. Okay, so now for the bonus, we are going to show how we can share the router across tasks, which might or might not be in different threads. So the way we're going to do it is first we're going to use the arc because we're going to share ownership and nobody has to mute it, so we can just use arc. Then we're going to make our clone for our task. We'll do the clone later for the methods below. Then we're going to have our Tokyo task spawn. And that will be our async block. We're doing move because we need the router. And we're going to say if we have a handler from the router get add, for example, then we're going to do our print. We're going to use a debug and we're just going to call the method with the params we want. And we're not forgetting to do our wait. And then we go below and we need to also have a router, which also will be our arc, obviously, for the rest. Because again, it might be in a different thread or not. Now we press save, and voila, we have our OK, proper 3 equals 7. Pretty good. And that will be it for today. Until next one, happy coding.